Hello, everyone. Can everyone hear me? Hi, everyone. My name is Yuhu. I'm the founder and CEO of Kaito. Today, I'm going to talk to you about the next gen search engine for Web3. We're an AI company, but also a Web3 company. So, right in the intersection of both AI and Web3. And the problem we're solving for is information access for the Web3 community. And this is very crucial today because not only for the builders that are, that are currently in the Web3 space, but also for the, the next billion new users going to be onboarded into the space. So before we dive into what, we, what we're doing, I want everyone to think about this question. How did people live before Google? Information was extremely siloed. Right? So if you have, Google is actually a company that's only 25 years old. Many people here are you know, older than 25 years old. I remember when I was little, there was no Google. Back in the day, people have to go to libraries, magazines, and then it becomes the internet. So if you look at the revolution of information access, there are four different eras. So the first phase is pre-web era, whereby people need to, you know, like I said, like go check magazines, go to library, access information in a very, very difficult way. And then we had the internet. So information started to come, come to the internet, come online, but at the same time, it still remains extremely siloed. The searchers need to be expert in knowing where to find certain information. Then we have Google era. Now you don't have to remember all these sites. You have one landing page that you need to remember, and that can get you everywhere. Just now, obviously, since November last year, ChatGPT's launch, now we're going through this transformation of ChatGPT era. People all of a sudden realize that you don't have to go through so many different search results. Now you can actually talk to a bot, and then the bot will be able to scan the internet or scan the database and to be able to answer your questions. So that's a whole new different era of information retrieval. But what, what does that mean in the context of Web3? If I think about these four different eras, I want you to think about this question. Where are we today in terms of Web3 information access? And I want you to read this. Pre-Google pre era, general information is online but remains siloed. Today, in Web3, we have you know, Twitter, Telegram, Discord, governance forum, Twitter space, news, research, all these kind of very, very siloed channels. Searchers need to identify the best websites for desired information. Today, if you're going to you know, go and find TVL, you may need to go to DeFi Llama. If you're going to go for you know, protocol fees, you may need to go to Token Terminal, for example. If you need to find, let's say, you know, certain dashboards, TVL for you know, friend tech, you're going to go on Dune to be able to check this information. So many you know, decentralized um, DAOs that put up a snapshot for votes. But if, if you want to see the rationale behind all these snapshots, you need to go and check out their governance forums. Extremely siloed, and you need to be the expert in knowing where to find certain information. And this is making it extremely tough for any new users coming to the space. The other day, my cousin was talking to me, hey, I'm very interested in Web3. Where can I get information? I was like, you're going to go on Twitter. You're going to subscribe to or follow these 1,000 people to then they know what's, what's happening in the space. My point is, currently, Web3 information is very siloed and fragmented, and it very much resembles the pre-Google era of what we went through in the past. And what is that? And the two main reasons why that is the state today. The first reason is Web3 information lives on a very distinct infrastructure. Right? Think about how Google crawls all the data. It's using a general crawler all the links on the internet, and it backtracks all, the, all of these links and be able to identify the relevant sites and all, also come up with a page rank to tell you what's relevant. But then Web3 information is siloed by nature. It is, and, and, the re, uh, and the way to access all this information is also very different, right? So you need to set up a node, you need to go through all the blocks, and all these chains are siloed as well. You need to, you know, in, integrate with Ethereum, then integrate with Avalanche, all these chains are all kind of siloed. So you need to go do this one by one. It's all, 
and it's not compatible with the, with the infrastructure that Google set up. And hence why none of the um, you know, blockchain-specific information is accessible by Google. And the second reason is decentralization and fragmentation. And the way a lot of the Web3 ecosystem or projects work are also very different. Right? So Uniswap team is you know, remote. Um, a lot of other project teams are also remote. This is the way you know, things are working, right? So MakerDAO you know, put, put up a governance vote. Um, but all the stuff like leading to the governance vote is actually decentralized in a way that community can come up with a, come up with a proposal. These things happen in the governance forums. By nature, it is much more fragmented and siloed, which makes the problem even worse. And by, because of these two issues, the Web3 community today suffer greatly from accessing proper information efficiently. So we're still living in a pre-Google era. So what Kaito does today, and the problem, like I said at the beginning, the problem we're trying to solve is information access in the space. We're an AI company. We're leveraging. So the core of the company is to build a solution that can really service the Web3 industry. And our solution is we'll build a search engine from the ground up and then leverage large language model to amplify the user experience. What does that mean? So today, there are you know, companies that are building on top of Google search engine, right? So the likes of Perplexity is a, is a very prominent unicorn in, in Silicon Valley. But at the same time, Google has come up their BARD, which is also LLM. Uh, LLM-based search engine that's leveraging Google's own search engine. And obviously, new Bing is coming up with a new LLM-based search engine based on the Bing search engine. But the, but the fundamental information, the, the fundamental way they access information is still through their own search engine. But because of the problem that we stated at the start, the traditional search engine today doesn't index most of the crypto and Web3 information, and hence why we need to build a search engine ourselves to serve the Web3 community. And the way we make the information, or the way we make the user experience great is by leveraging a large language model to bring ourselves in the Web3 community from the pre-Google era to the Google era, and then ultimately to the ChatGPT era. This is two orders of magnitude efficiency boost in terms of accessing information in the space. So where are we today? We founded a company in March 2022, so around right about one and a half years ago. We received our seed round financing sort of around right about 12 months ago. It was led by Dragonfly Sequoia Jane Street. And then late last year, we launched the alpha version. Earlier this year, we launched the beta version. And then today, we're launching a public version. This public version is not a full-on search engine yet. I'll tell you more about this. So this is an institutional phasing information service terminal. It is meant to service all the people, all the, primarily institutions today, because they spend days and nights going through information and research. So we're targeting this niche group first before we expand to the mass market to the search engine space. I would like to show you a video in terms of what it does.
Great. So as you can probably see, so this is an institutional facing product. And what it does is indexes so many different sources that researchers and, and people in the space are constantly struggling to you know, access and query and uh, aggregate at the same time and query. So our institutional facing portal can very much streamline the, the workflow of all the researchers. So where we're we at today, we built an information service terminal for Web3. And this is what we launched today. The next goal is next year, we're going to be building a search engine for crypto. That's going to be, face, that's going to be retail facing. It's going to be serving the mass market. So everyone's going to be free to use, um, a finally, a Web3 search engine yourself. And what's our end goal? Eventually, we believe that the world's information is going to be living on-chain and off-chain. The likes of Google and New Bing today, they're going to index the, all the information in the, in the web era, right? So every, anything that's on the internet. But then we do need a search engine that indexes everything on-chain. And that is what we do. And then eventually, blockchain is not going, to not going to be only hosting just transactions. It's going to be hosting a lot of other, you know, either you know, articles that people publish, decentralized social, a lot of people's you know, tweets, social information, potentially images, videos, all these you know, publications, all this kind of stuff. It's going to be a, a block space for anything to be hosted on that. We do need a search engine that is able to index all of this information. And that is what we serve. And lastly, so this is, this is our contact information. We also have a booth at Token 20, 2049. So if you're interested, feel free to come by. Happy, happy to have any conversation with you and any collaborations that you want to that we, you want to you build together, we're very happy to take. And we have one more minute, so happy to take any questions that you may have. Um, are you directly integrating with like Twitter API and the Discord API? Like, how do you, how do you pull the information? It's, it's a mix of both. So we, we are having official con um, a partnership with them. And also for Discord, you are we're essentially only scraping all the public service. So we're not touching any of the private service. Yeah. So all, any, but all, the, all, the project public, uh, all, all the project Discord servers are all public. So if it's a, it, yes, yeah, we only index the public ones. Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. Um, hello. Here. Uh, yep. you, have, um, you said that, uh, as you said, the, the on-chain data is unstructured. How do yep. you um, d index this? Do you have a layer of interpretation? How yep. do you deal with it? So it's a very good question. And the, the way we think about it is there's obviously a ton of companies building in the on-chain space, right? So we're standing on the giants of the sh well, shoulders of all these giants, right? So they are, you know, Nansen, Dune, DeFi Llama, Token Terminal. A lot of on-chain companies have done tremendous work in the space querying very noisy blockchain data. So the first step for us is to be able to identify and query all these pre-processed information layer, data layers. So for example, if people are asking questions such as, hey, how do I find the TVL for Frentech? We want to pinpoint them and direct them to the Dune dashboard that specifically solves that. But obviously, we're aggregating all the other sources as well, so like Token Terminal and other, other places, so that we become a search engine that people can rely on in terms of finding the information and people don't have to necessarily remember, hey, I do need to go to that side for that specific piece of information. Hey, maybe you know, Dune doesn't have that. Maybe I need to go to Flipside, et cetera. So that's, that's our approach. I think we're probably out of, out of time. Can we take one more? Oh, OK. Very happy to. Uh, I know there are more questions, so feel free to come out to the booth. I'm happy to take the conversation further. Thank you.